This is episode 255 on the 2nd of September 2020. Ever since Roman Reigns returned to professional wrestling after taking a short break of nearly four months, his dramatic entry into the finale of the main event of SummerSlam and then exactly what Brock Lesnar has been doing for a long time, making people wait to sign the contract, most importantly aligning himself with someone like Paul Heyman whose passion for promos is legendary. Start his introduction in the following manner. My name is Paul Heyman and I am the advocate of the reigning, defending, undisputed heavyweight champion. But this time the client won't be Brock Lesnar. Instead, they have aligned themselves with each other and this partnership got off to a very fruitful start when you saw what a certain Roman Reigns did at the payback pay-per-view. Out his two opponents in the triple threat match to wear themselves out, beat each other and then when they were down, when that superplex happened off the ring and the ring broke, when both his opponents Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman were down, he was conspicuous by his absence. But the moment those two wrestlers went down after the superplex of the top rope which broke the ring which is not a new thing as far as WWE is concerned it has happened before but the most important thing is when he came in taking advantage of the situation he was a fresh competitor remember till that time he had not signed the contract he was making the WWE officials sweat because he was not signing the contract though he had said that he would be at the triple threat match. But was this entire thing choreographed? Of course it was. The moment the superplex happened, the ring broke, both the wrestlers went down, he made his entry, signed the contract, came and delivered a couple of spears, got a fresh referee in and won the Universal Championship without breaking a sweat as it's said in sports parlance. Though it would be very interesting to see as to how this entire thing carries itself out. Will he come to the tapings of his regular brand Smackdown and defend the championship or will he go the Brock Lesnar way not make an entry as far as a regular championship defense is concerned. It won't be surprised if for the next month's pay-per-view or rather this month's pay-per-view which is due to happen in a couple of weeks time, four weeks to be exact, WWE officials make him decide on an opponent which means that they will engage in triple threats matches or kind of a gauntlet match where the opponent for Roman Reigns is decided and it won't be a surprise if it's not a single opponent but a fatal four or a triple threat match and the likes of AJ Styles, Baron Corbin and the others, the other wrestlers of that particular brand are given a chance to compete in a match and the winner of that match would decide the opponent for Roman Reigns for the Clash of Champions pay-per-view. Maybe even Seth Rollins could get a look in to rekindle the rivalry between former partners in Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. It would be a all-brand over-the-top battle royal and the winner of that match would face Roman Reigns. As I said, there are numerous ways in which to decide opponent for the next pay-per-view which method they decide 
to decide a final opponent i don't know but what are the methods it is battle royal over the top all brand it is a triple threat match the winner of which faces roman reigns it could be a gauntlet match it could be a triple threat match involving roman reigns and two other wrestlers there are numerous possibilities as far as this is concerned let's analyze the other matches that took place this was not the only main match that happened yes this was the main event but there were other matches as well most of the other matches at this pay per view were the non title matches and would you call these matches as upsets well for me no if it's matt riddle defeating king corbin is it an upset no it was an appropriate named pay per view with the likes of freshly inducted keith lee defeating wendy orton matt riddle defeating king corbin big e defeating shemus yes it was at a smaller pay per view not at the big ones like royal rumble or wrestlemania or even summer slam but it was appropriate for these semi new and somebody who's been there for almost a decade big e defeating the superstars who are former champions that is shemus corbin and orton though now appropriately once again orton gets a second chance a second wind at drew mcintyre for a wwe championship after he beat the likes of keith lee and seth rollins to top it all a cerebral attempt by the likes of randy orton and roman reigns to win the respective matches without breaking a sweat one becomes the challenger for a championship match the other goes on to win a championship is it a possibility that we will see a champion versus champion match will it be roman reigns clashing against the likes of randy orton or even drew mcintyre that is something that remains to be seen even the women's tag team championship wasn't a surprise when the unlikely duo of shayna baszler and nia jax beat the tag team champions sasha and bailey as i said it was a pay per view appropriately named there is a special edition to the poetry reading part today we are going to sing a song named come september written by natalie imbruglia her bones will ache her mouth will shake and as the passion dies her magic heart will break she'll fly to france because there is no chance no hope for cinderella come september a violet sky will need to cry cause if it doesn't rain then everything will die she needs to heal she needs to feel something more than tender come september everything wrong gonna be all right come september the souls that burn will twist and turn and find you in the dark no matter where you run but lost her spark and what she's pushing for she can't remember everything wrong gonna be all right come september her eyes surrender her cry a crying shame coming undone is she ever gonna feel the same she will run she's gonna bring the sun shining just for you instead of everyone and so it goes she'll stand alone and try to remember come september everything wrong gonna be all right come september she's made a mark i feel the ancient mariner i feel thy skinny hand 
and thou art long and lank and brown as is the ribbed sea sand i feel thee and thy glittering eye and thy skinny hand so brown fear not fear now thou wedding guest this body drop not down alone alone all all alone alone on a wide wide sea and never a saint took pity on my soul in agony the many men so beautiful and they all dead dead lie and a thousand thousand slimy things lived on and so did i i looked upon the rotting sea and drew my eyes away i looked upon the rotting deck and there the dead men lay i looked to heaven and tried to pray but or ever a prayer had gust a wicked whisper came and made my heart as dry as dust i closed my lids and kept them close and the balls like pulses beat for the sky and the sea and the sea and the sky lay dead like a load on my weary eye and the dead were at my feet the cold sweat melted from their limbs nor rot nor reek did they the look with which they looked on me had never passed away an orphan curse would wag to hell a spirit from on high but oh more horrible than that is the curse in a dead man's eye seven days seven nights i saw that curse and yet i could not die the moving moon went up the sky and no where did abide softly she was going up and star or two beside her beams bemocked the sultry main like april hoar frost spread but where the ship's huge shadow lay the charmed water burned away a still and awful red beyond the shadow of the ship i watched the water snakes they moved in tracks of shining white and when they read the elfish light fell off in hoary flakes within the shadow of the ship i watched their rich attire blue glossy green and the velvet black they coiled and swam and every track was a flash of golden fire o oh, happy living things no tongue their beauty might declare a spring of love gushed from my heart and i blessed them unaware sure my kind saint took pity on me and i blessed them unaware the self same moment i could pray and from my neck so free the albatross fell off and sank like lead into the sea now it's time for some light reading from P.G. Woodhouse's Aunt's Omnibus. Let conscience by your guide, Basse, trying to drive it into his nut how wrong it is to put over a fast one on the widow and the orphan. I am assuming for purposes of argument that Clank is an orphan, though possibly not a widow. But my misguided young shrimp, do you really suppose that Pop Basset looks on me as a friend and counsellor to whom he is always willing to lend a ready ear? You yourself were stressing only a moment ago how allergic he was to the booster charm. It's no good me talking to him. I don't want you to. Then what do you want me to do? I want you to paint the thing and return it to Plank. Who will then sell it to Mr. Travers at a proper price? The idea of Uncle Watkin only giving him a fiver for it? We can't have him getting away with raw work like that. He needs a sharp lesson. I smiled another tolerant smile. The young Bowl, we will amuse me. 
I was thinking how right I had been in predicting that any job assigned by her to anyone would be unfit for human consumption. Well, really, Stiffy, the quiet rebuke in my voice ought to have bathed her in shame and remorse, but it didn't. She came back at me strongly. I don't know what you are well reeling about. You are always pinching things, aren't you? Policeman's helmet and things like that. I inclined the bean. It was true I had once lived in Arcady. There is, I was obliged to concede, a certain substance in what you say. I admit that in my name I may have removed a lid or two from the upper stories of the members of the constabulary. Well, then, but only on boat race night and when the heart was younger than it is as of even date. It was an episode of the sort that first brought me and your uncle together. But you can take it from me that the hot blood has cooled and I am a reformed character. My answer to your suggestion is no. No, no, buddy, no, I said, making it clear to the meanest intelligence. Why don't you pinch the thing yourself? It wouldn't be any good. I couldn't take it to plank. I am confined to barracks. Bartholomew bit the butler and the sins of the Scotty are visited upon its owner. I do think you might reconsider, Bertie. Not a hope. You are a blighter, but a blighter who knows his own mind and is not to be shaken by the argument or a plea, however spicuous. She was silent for a space. Then she gave a little sigh. Oh dear, she said, and I hope I wouldn't have to tell Madeline about Gussie. I gave another of those visible starts of mine. I have seldom heard words I like the sound of less fraught with sinister significance they seem to me. Do you know what happened tonight, Bertie? I was roused from sleep about an hour ago. And what do you think roused me? Spell the footsteps, no less. I crept out of my room and I saw Gussie sneaking down the stairs. All was darkness, of course, but he had a little torch and it shone on his spectacles. I followed him. He went to the kitchen. I peered in and there was the cook shoveling cold steak and kidney pie into him like a steam door loading a grain ship. And the thought flashed into my mind that if Madeline heard of this, she would give him the bum's rush before he knew what had hit him. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with Aditya.